Hello, today we're gonna make this heater run on biogas. The first thing we're gonna have to take care of is the pressure coming into this heater. Um, there's a tag attached to the back of the heater and it's got specs on it. This, this heater is calling for an inlet pressure of between 14 and seven inch water column. So convert it to PSI, that is uh, 0.25 to 0.5 uh, PSI. So we have to acquire a regulator that will bring our, our inlet pressure um, from the tank down from at highest 300, right? We, we need a regulator that'll go from 300 down to between that range. This regulator that I found can be found in the description to this video. You can buy one just like this and it'll go from 300 down to, uh, I believe this one goes to 11. It's definitely in that range though. So check that out. Now that we got the pressure good to go, let's, uh, let's, let's do it. Right here under where it says natural gas only, you'll find a inlet to this heater that's a regulator in there that brings it down to four and a half inches of water. You'll need one of these fittings. That's three eighth inch NPT to three eighth inch flare. Uh, you can find that fitting also in the description below. The flared sides of these adapters don't need any Teflon tape, but uh, make sure you tape the NPT sides so you get a good seal. Next, we got our 3 8 inch steel braided hose with flare, female flare fittings on either side. And there's our regulator we already talked about. Making sure everything's flowing fine, everything's working like it should. Um, the flared end of these fittings on either side of the hose, those don't need uh, Teflon tape, but the MPT sides do, remember that. What's happening here is pretty interesting. It's pushing the flame around. The pilot gas is pushing that flame around without igniting. And the reason for that is the gas is too lean. It's mixing with air. There's a little manifold in there. Um, so it's not able to light. So to make that adjustment is no problem. We just have to take the face of this thing off. Now there's two Phillips head screws on either side, four total. Once you get those out, the face of this thing will slide off. You gotta kinda whack it uh, on the bottom and push the face upward and it'll come off for you.
right here, this hole in the brass thing, that is the air intake to mix with the fuel gas. So we got to cover that up with some tin foil. Boom, the pilot's lit now. Um, I, at this point, I did run into a pretty interesting problem though. There's two wires going in there, the black and the white. The black one is for an auto start. The white wire is a probe. And if that gets cold, uh, if it's not hot enough, it'll shut gas off as a safety measure. It'll shut gas off to the entire heater. And I do like that safety measure. I want to keep it. But my biogas, for some reason, wasn't able to keep that probe hot enough. I think the probe's too far away. I don't know why I ran into this problem. Um, and it took me about two hours of tinkering to uh, come up with really a good solution. My, my answer was to take that one Phillips head uh, screw out and swap places uh, for the lighter, the auto ignition, and the, uh, and the heat probe. So I put the heat probe where the auto ignition is. And the auto ignition, I just left dangling. It's not gonna work anymore. This thing's always gonna have to be lit with a lighter. I thought I was gonna get away with not uh, increasing the size of the jet on this project, but I just couldn't get it to uh, work the way I wanted it to. So here I'm taking apart the flared connection to the, uh, to the main jet here. And then once that's off, <laughs> I spun the, uh, the jet out of the housing there. I'll show you here once I get it all the way out. No, all I did was open that little hole up to the next largest size, which was 5 sixteenths. I could have got a better shot of this, but what we're doing here is covering the ends of the manifold, the main manifold here, with uh, tin foil to keep the air out. Um, so what that'll do is, again, make the, uh, the gas less lean so that it can, so that it can light when it finds the pilot. And uh, to do that, I covered both ends as best I could with tinfoil. At this point, the heater is working. 
Um, if you're wondering why it's propped up all stupid like that at an angle, it's because I hadn't figured out to move the probe yet. Um, and it actually worked. The, uh, the pilot would stay lit with it propped up like that. The probe would be in the heat. And if you don't believe me that this heater is working, here's an oily rag. That heater is hot. It's putting off a lot of heat. There's only one thing left to do. Let's put the face back on and then um, we'll do a little demo. You can see how well it works. Now this is the high range. We'll bump it down to the low range. It has only three settings, high, low, and pilot. That's the low range. And just pilot. Now to go from pilot to lit, I had to go to high first. I couldn't get it to light itself on the low range. So I go straight to high and it lights from pilot and then I'm free to do what I want. All in all, I spent about $200 on this project and I think that is a pretty affordable price for, uh, for a working heater for the shop. Free fuel forever. This is uh, Part of the value here is that I don't have to rely on anybody for this energy. This is mine. So um, there's links to all of uh, those four things, the regulator, the adapters, the hose, and the heater. There's links for all of that in the description. And if you use those links to buy this gear, two things will happen. You'll have the exact same gear that I used in this video and those are affiliate links, I'll get paid, and that will help to fund um, future projects like this one. Thanks for watching.